is om ouder te zijn. You have given a lot of thought what it means to be a parent. The title is Parenthood, a roller coaster ride. Well, enjoy the ride. <laughs> Parenthood is a roller coaster ride, a wild ride. I've been saying this for years, but still it never ceases to amaze me. Just this morning I had such a ride, yet another one. We were sitting at the breakfast table, everything was peaceful, the kids were passing the fruit quietly to each other, and all of a sudden World War III broke out. Somebody spilled juice on somebody else's favorite shirt. They started to shout. I started to shout. They were late for school. I was late for work. I said, why did you do that? That was so klutzy. And why are you so sensitive? You didn't mean it. And why did you give them juice anyway? It's bad for their teeth. <laughs> Can you recognize that? Yeah. As parents, it's our job to keep it all together. But we all know how hard that is in practice. And nowadays we have uh, the field of child development, developmental psychology, and we have the science of child rearing with all the gazillions of books to help us know how to do it. And that's helpful, but there's also a downside. The literature says we can do it all. We can juggle work and parenthood. We can raise perfectly formed young people with the latest scientific insights. But more often than not, parents are maxed out. We don't have the time or the energy to live up to all these goals. Instead, parents end up feeling frazzled. And what it does to the relationship. And this sort of experience is reflected by titles like perfect madness and mommy guilt. The problem is, whether we read scientific or the popular literature on parenting, we get only a partial view of what parenthood is. It's seen in terms of the needs of children, what's best for their development, and how parents, and how and whether parents are adequately meeting these needs. Rarely is parenthood considered from the perspective of the parent. Rarely is it considered as an existential experience that a, an adult human being becomes a parent and what is that experience like anyway? What is parenthood from the inside out? What is the psychology of parenthood? Today I want to talk to you about the roller coaster at the heart of parenthood and I also want to talk to you about how as professionals we have our own roller coaster ride. We all want to stop children from suffering at the hands of their parents or because of their parents' unwitting mistakes or faults. So parents stir up a lot of reactions in us. And that's no wonder because really at the core of parenthood, it's a deeply ambivalent experience. Like all intimate relationships, it includes moments of loving and hating, of being relaxed one minute and furious the next peaceful breakfast, World War III. <laughs> Ambivalence is the inevitable result of being committed together, of being together and yet being separate people with conflicting needs. Relationships obviously are full of ambivalence too. Only for parents there's no divorce option. You don't have that option and you also don't even have the option to take a time out when you need it. Instead there's this fundamental awareness of being responsible for the child and the constant sense of whether or not one is actually living up to that very primary, ethical, really existential mandate. We can compare the primary feelings and immediate reactions in any given moment of being a parent to the front car on the train that races along the roller coaster. This car is the heart of parental subjectivity. But hitched right up to it, is the self-evaluation of the parent, the constant and relentless comparison between what she did and what she should have done. And which parent doesn't have that sense of a gap between, especially before we became parents, how we were going to do it and how we were going to do things differently from other parents we'd seen and we were going to do it better, etc., and how it actually turned out. 
add to this our professional evaluation, not to mention society's judgments and discourses, and you get third car on that train, on the roller coaster. So what we get here is a picture of parenthood and what it is to be a parent, in which there's always a kind of double or split reality, a split experience. On the one hand, the primary subjective experience, the heart of the matter, or the heat of the moment, rather, and on the other hand, that constant <coughs> evaluative layer, ever present. Not just what I feel, but always on top of it, what do I feel about what I feel, what do I think about it, and most of all, how did I perform? This reflects a deeper tendency in our social and professional discourse to position parents as a kind of child-rearing object for their children, rather than as a subjective being in their own right. So we forget about parents', parents subjectivity. We see this in countless studies and theories. Parents are high risk or low risk. They're securely attached or insecurely attached. They're permissive or authoritarian or adequate or inadequate. It's a performative discourse. Whatever field the labels come from, they're all evaluating parents against one or another standard of how they ought to perform in relation to their child's developmental needs. So the last two cars on that train. So what have we done <clears throat> as well-meaning professionals living within this discourse? We've made trainings, Bim talked about the cognitive, the emphasis on cognition with children, Well, we've done that with parents too. Tons and tons of trainings to teach parents skills to do it better, to perform better. Or we have, from the therapeutic standpoint, uh, of course, ways to work with parents to help them not uh, pass on the emotional baggage of their childhood. And since parents themselves, of course, share our goal of creating happier children, all too often, this lack of attention to their subjective experience goes easily unnoticed. But I miss a more explicit and radical emphasis on parental experience as a phenomenon in its own right. And I'm not talking about adding items like, take time for yourself, as number 13 on the list of things parents should do, especially if they feel like they failed at the first 12, they're not going to be that interested in me time. That's not enough. The problem is that, like that checklist, we professionals also have the best intentions towards parents. Only at a certain point, we find ourselves getting irritated and frustrated. We've given them all the skills, the tools, the training, and still they're not doing the right thing, or they're not following our advice. Are they not motivated? Do they not care about their kids? That's where our own roller coaster begins. We too cannot easily focus on their experience without getting wrapped up in our own evaluations. We have our own subjective responses. Even the nicest parents confront us with values that rub us the wrong way, or they pressure us to fix the child that they've brought to us for help or to present them with easy solutions, which we don't have. Parents elicit our strongest emotional responses, perhaps because we've all been a child, we can all identify with the child. Or maybe we're parents too and they're in the same situation as we've been in, but we really don't like the way they're dealing with it. We wish they would deal with the way we did or the way we think we should have, so then we're back to those multiple layers. And on top of that, we have our own third level of influence as professionals in the often strong opinions of team members agencies, child protection, professionals, and of course the wider social discourse and professional discourse. So how do we even think clearly with all that going on? Maybe about as well as I did this morning with the kids, not really very clearly. But here's my final point. Parents and professionals alike need space to reflect. After this morning, you can be sure I rushed off to work feeling guilty and not very great about myself as a parent. I had been too impatient. I'm too busy anyway. Uh, I needed the distance and the self-acceptance that reflection and a really, truly supportive friend or colleague or professional can provide. Somebody who gets that parenthood is a big and crazy and mixed up experience with highs and lows. Someone that doesn't immediately tell me what I did wrong or how to fix it. For 
professionals, that reflection can take place with colleagues, consultation, peer supervision, a place to be able to say how stuck or frustrated we are with the clients we're working with, to separate our judgments from our gut reactions, and to make sense of our feelings in light of what they tell us about the client, about ourselves, and about the larger systems within which we work. So there are two roller coasters, a professional one and a parental one. In the Netherlands, we've got an emerging discourse about empowerment. It's an opportunity, potentially, but there's a real risk of this becoming just another slogan, just like time for yourself. It's not enough. So I end with a question. What will it take to open up the space for real reflection about real dilemmas when it comes to parenthood? And what will it take to think about parenthood from the inside out? I look forward to talking with you about that. Thanks. Thank you very much, Katie Lee.